Good evening. I'm very careful because I know we just uh, went back to this, and when we first were adjusting it, Seth, it was, it probably could have lifted us off the ground. To the, the volume was very strong, so I'm trying to be. Uh, is it okay? All right, that's good. Good to be with each of you, especially if you are a guest. We welcome you. Um, our service for uh, this weekend is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Our theme is enough. Uh, but before we uh, begin. Would you rise and just greet each other with the peace of the Lord? God's peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. God's peace. Good to see you guys. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. I'll get you, Kim. I got you. God's peace. And God's peace up there. Our service for this weekend, you can follow along, project in the screen. Majority of it, you can also follow along in the hymnal. Uh, we begin with our opening hymn, 903 out of the hymnal. This is the day the Lord has made, 903. May God bless our worship this weekend. As you're able, we rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We take a moment of silence for reflection. We confess together. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. Please be seated as we sing, Come unto me, ye weary, 684, 684. Lord be with you. Let us pray. We pray together in unison the collect of the day. Gracious Father, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Grant that Christ, the bread of life, may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this weekend, for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, is from 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning with the first verse. It also serves as our text for today's message. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. And then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, so may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then Elijah was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life 
and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord again a second time came and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapters 4 and 5. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learn Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, and for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you're able, we rise at this time for the reading of our Holy Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own, will but the will of him who sent me and this is the will of him who sent me that i should lose nothing of all that he has given me but raise it up on the last day for this is the will of my father that everyone who looks on the son and believes in him should have eternal life and i will raise him up on the last day so the group jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, 
Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the mission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. I invite any children if they'd like to come forward at this time for a message. Well, I had a feeling that might happen. So you know what? Since we're all children of God through faith in Jesus, we're all who believe I'm coming out to you. So you are my children today. Well, I tell you what, how many of you like to go on long trips? Really? Driving? Really? Has any of you been like on a plane to like Japan or China before when you're many hours on it. Anybody done that before? Did you enjoy it? That was too long. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> you know, going on a trip, when I was growing up with my family, man, our family does the same thing. How many of you go, when you go on a trip, you bring snacks along? Let me do that. Thank you for raising your hand. Some are going like this. How many do not bring snacks along when you go on a trip? Really? Don, we need to talk. <laughs> Good for you. Well, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but we go on snacks. Uh, we bring some snacks, and so I got something. Anybody know what this is? Licorice, all-American snack right there, licorice. Uh, careful not to eat them all yourself. Uh, let's see, what else do I have for snacks here? I've got, uh, how many like peanut butter? Peanut butter fans and crackers, peanut butter. Okay, that would be you. I would give them to you. I have many in my family that would like it, but good for you. 
Um, I've got some, anybody like sweet and salty? Nutty bars, that's kind of my thing along with others. Not many sweets that I do not eat, as you can tell. But they help, don't they? Especially if you're going for another long trip. And along the way, you're going to probably need some other things like what? What's this? Yeah, we need something to drink, too, along the way, to give us strength as we go along the way, right? As we travel. And it helps. And then when we finally get our destination, then one of the first things we'll do is probably have a good meal, a full meal, extended meal, and how wonderful that is, too, and to rest, okay? Well, you know what? When I think about this, I think about one of God's servants that you heard of in the Old Testament today. Does anybody remember his name? What was his name? Elijah. And Elijah has seen a lot. Elijah was called to a people who didn't necessarily want to hear the message. Elijah was called to a people to proclaim a message they didn't want to hear. You want that job? Most of us wouldn't, but he was called, and he did it to the best of his ability. But then he saw some victory. But then after the victory, he had some bad news. The queen wanted to kill him. And that kind of put him overboard. And so what he did was he took a trip. He went running. In fact, he ran as far as he could. And finally, until he got to a point where he said, I've had enough. And he said, I'm going to lay down. And Lord, he can take me. I'm done. But the good news for Elijah and for us is when we feel like that, God doesn't just leave us there. He's the one who comes to us. And I want you to listen and hear in the message and hear the words again. He doesn't come in there and say, come on, man, get up and get going. He comes to him, the angel of the Lord, and he provides for him. He gives him some food. He gives him something to drink, some water. And he has him rest some more. And then when he rests, he gives him more. And then he says, get up. I've got some work for you. And he sends them off. That's kind of how it is for us, too. God provides for us, doesn't he? All that we need for this body and life, but he provides us even more, doesn't he? He doesn't come to us with an angel. He comes to us himself. And Jesus comes for the sole purpose that he might first live for us and that he might die our death on the cross and then rise to set us free, that we might have life now and eternally. And along the journey of our life, he continues to provide all that we need. And through the word, he strengthens us. And through his holy supper, he fuels us in faith and his forgiveness, that we can do the work he's given us to do, to point us to Jesus until he comes or calls us home. Please pray with me, we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. We thank you that you used and you loved a prophet by the name of Elijah and that you cared for him and you used him for your purpose. We thank you that you love and care for people like all of us here and everyone in this world, including me, and that you provide for us and you saved us through Jesus. And you give us purpose and work to do. Help us do that for Jesus' name. In his name we pray. Amen. We continue by singing our hymn. Our sermon hymn is, I am content my Jesus ever lives.
God's grace and peace be multiplied unto each of you tonight from God our Father and from our risen Savior Jesus. Amen. Our text for tonight's message is from our Old Testament reading from 1 Kings chapter 19. We read a few moments ago. Let me read the fourth verse to you once again. But Elijah himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It's enough now. O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. This is our text. Please join with me in a word of prayer. We pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to come to your house to hear your word and receive your gifts. Strengthen us in faith and in life in all occasions. May we ever cling to you and your promises, knowing that you have given us a living hope and abundant life now and eternally through our Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray now that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart, may they ever be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus, our Savior's name, we pray. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, enough. Have you ever said or thought that before? Enough. I have to say the last two weeks for our family has been pretty rough. On a Thursday, I heard that my mother was called to her heavenly home, and her being 98, sad, but I rejoice. She's where she was looking forward to going. Then on the following Monday, my brother-in-law, Pastor John, was called to his heavenly home. That was rough. And you might say, enough, enough, Lord. I say that also knowing that we're not alone, are we, in that? I'm sure each and every one of us has had times in our life where we could say, enough. They have that old saying, when it rains, it pours, and it sometimes seems that way. And I know many people have been trying to bring comfort, but sometimes they, they've encouraged with the words, you know, pastor, they come in threes. It's not necessarily what I want to hear. <laughs> but we know where the heart is, where it's coming. Or maybe it's other things. When we were up in Canada, uh, that's where we were as my mom was waiting to be called to her heavenly home. Uh, we saw many people up there, and when we were walking down the road, coming back from the grocery store or the market that they had there up there, on the same side of the road we saw a young woman. And you can tell by her, just the way she was walking and standing, she was upset. She had seen enough. And a man whistled for her a couple of times, an unusual whistle, but it was just really a, kind of a strange encounter. But she turned around and she came, and she was going like this, but you could see her eyes and you could see the tears that were coming down her face. And I can only imagine what she was going through. The only thing we could do is pray. If we had tried to intervene with something probably made it worse, especially coming from a different culture into their culture. She definitely had enough. The list goes down of things. We go through encounters and relationships and trials. Some of us have mental health issues and concerns that we're going through. It might be us, it might be a loved one. The list goes on and finally we might get to a point where we just say, enough, Lord, enough. Or maybe it's just a simple thing. Have you ever had a bad case of the flu? And you're sitting there in agony and you're thinking, Lord, if you're going to come, this would be a good time right now. We feel so lousy. We think it's enough. Well, you know, if that's how you feel, maybe you have a little bit that you can relate to and consider with Elijah. Elijah had had it. Enough. 
he said. God had just given him what any faithful prophet would have called a great victory. He was very high, very rejoicing what happened. You see, the people of Israel sadly had turned away from God to serve false gods, and God, in the encounter with the altars, showed who the true God was, the trying God, God. And so on that day, Elijah built an altar in front of everybody to the true God. And the idol worshipers built that own altar, their own altar. And then everyone, remember, waited to see which God would prove he was the real God by sending down fire from heaven to burn up the sacrifice. And at Elijah's request, of course, the Lord sent fire to show that the God of Israel was a true God. And they all shouted, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And then they rounded up the prophets of Baal. And they were killed. At least for a day, Elijah. Elijah had a good day. Hoping even maybe a queen, maybe even she may have repented. But now the day after, the queen is threatening Elijah's life. It's like nothing changed for him at all. Not so fast in your victory, Elijah. By tomorrow, I'm going to see that you're as dead as my beloved prophets. And so Elijah runs out of the country, out of the neighboring country, out into the desert. And when he stops and catches his breath, he prays, it's enough, oh Lord, take my life. And Elijah wishes he was dead. I've had enough. Now, from our human perspective, I think we can relate a little bit. Look what all he endured. He endured years of difficulty in ministry and trial, isolation, hiding, worry, hunger, getting on by meager rations, and knowing that he was hunted. Doesn't sound like fun, does it? Maybe on the outside, he seemed strong. Maybe wise. But to himself, perhaps, he even thought he was a failure. We can know how that goes, too. And so he says, enough. And that's how he begins his prayer to God. Enough. Well, you and I are no Elijah. But I wonder if that's how you and I felt. And let me say this, if you haven't, let me prepare you. Because very likely in this broken world, you're going to have your time in which you're going to say, enough. But inwardly, outwardly, we may look as if we're confident, put together, responsible. But inwardly, it might be different. How do you see yourself, and how do I see myself? After years of being stuck in a situation that seems to not change, after all the striving in life that we go through at times, with the long list of troubles that you and I may have, that you can only name and perhaps only I, but we don't want to sound like a complainer, do we? Because often people will say, we don't want to hear it, do we? So where do we turn? Don't turn on your TV set, please. Don't go to the news. That's not the place where you're going to find the encouragement, are you? In fact, not too much good news there. And then that trickles over sometimes even into music. I'm not a big country lover, but I tell you what, some of the music, they kind of get the uh, stigma that it's all about tough times and heartbreaks and all those different things. Probably not fair. Listen to complaints of a songwriter in the 17th century. 
he says this. It is enough. Therefore, Lord, take my spirit from here to the spirits of Zion. There's enough of the misery that crushes me. There's enough of the cross that almost breaks my back. How heavy, O oh God, how hard it is, this burden. It is enough. And in the German, es ist genug. Original German. That's what it's called. Cantata by a guy named Bach. Have you ever heard of him before? Pretty well known. It is enough is taken from the very words Elijah cried out to God. But Johann Sebastian Bach wrote the cantata on the last verse of the hymn. And he heard, turned a cry of despair into a hymn of hope and longing for the Savior. You know it by the title of this. I am content my Jesus ever lives. Sound familiar? We just sang it, didn't we? To the melody of despair, we have a hymn of victory of our Savior over sin, death, and the power of the devil. I am content my Jesus ever lives. Thanks be to God, we have a living God, a living Savior, and a living hope through Jesus, through his cross and empty tomb, for he is Lord. Elijah was sustained by God, by the angel of the Lord in the desert. He was given enough to go on, although his problems were immediately taken away. It should comfort you and me to know and see how gentle and patient God is with Elijah. He doesn't argue with him. He doesn't say, have you forgotten the great miracle I did? He just gives him lovingly food, and he gives him drink, and he gives him a chance to sleep, and then more food, and more to drink, and he says nothing to him at all except to meet his needs. And Elijah's revived. Faced with this gentle, quiet kindness, Elijah comes back to life just a bit. And he's led to go to the Mount Horeb, where the people of Israel met God long ago. Elijah will meet God there too, and God will bring him back from the brink of despair. But during his earthly life, he does not see the fulfillment of his hopes. But you do, and so do I. You see, the fulfillment of God's promise that Elijah longed to see was reserved for us and for all to come. Yes, we may experience difficulties, trials, had enough in life. We may have a list of troubles along the way. I'll let you fill in the blank. But God still shows us this same love and gentleness when we are at the end of our rope, when we can't think what to do because we are exhausted or sad or overwhelmed or afraid, God comes to us and he cares for us. He knows we can't do anything for ourselves. That's why he came to us and in the greatest way, in Jesus Christ, our Savior and King. You and I have received help from the Lord in the greatest way when he became a man in the person of Jesus, God in the flesh, to be our only help, our Savior, our Redeemer, and King. And Jesus along the way, he didn't say never enough or it's enough until he indeed had done all he had come to do to pay for our salvation and our sins on Calvary's cross. There, he didn't say it's enough, but he said it is finished. It's complete. Our sins were paid for. Our salvation secured. And he rose in victory over sin, death, and the devil for us 
and for all through faith in him. And like Elijah, Jesus has fed us too. He feeds us through his word as we hear it, as he speaks to us and tells of the promises that he has for us now and eternal that he's given. He comes to us in that message of forgiveness that we received and that we need to hear of all of our sin and shame and guilt. And he will come to us today at his holy supper and give us his very body and blood in with and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith for the journey ahead of us. The food we need for healing and life. And so our complaint of despair or trial is transformed into a song of victory, of resurrection victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the words of that last verse again. I am content, or we might say, it is enough. At length I shall be free, awakened from the dead, arising glorious evermore to be with you, my living head. The chains that hold my body sever, then shall my soul rejoice forever. I am content. I am content. Yes, we may tell God enough, but Jesus comes to give us more than enough. If you're at the end of your rope right now, Jesus is waiting for you and desires to uphold you and strengthen you. He will care for you with the same kindness that he always has. He loves you and me with an everlasting love enough to give up his life for you and for all, enough to rise from the dead and go on caring for you and for me forever. Let him care for you. So Elijah cried out enough, and now we look to the Lord. It is enough. Jesus is enough. I am content, and so are you. That's the comfort and hope in the Lord that we need. We need to cling to, and we need to share. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the true faith unto life everlasting through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And so I threw my wife a monkey wrench. We're going to sing the last verse of the hymn again. rise as we sing our operatory create in me
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son to be the bread of life, giving eternal life to all who come to him. By your Holy Spirit, lead the whole church to er in, on earth to imitate you and walk in your love as your beloved children, to your glory and the furthering of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give strength and courage to all pastors and all church workers, missionaries, and those who assist in your service, especially those suffering from conflict, burnout, or depression. And strengthen them by the example of Elijah and the prophets and the apostles before them. Comfort them through the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, through holy baptism, you've joined the faithful together as your children, making us brothers and sisters through your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us grace to believe that through Christ we belong to one another. Lead us to put away all falsehood and malice and instead to speak Christ's truth to one another in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, bless all families and homes that one generation may tell to the next the wonderful works of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers for our nation, O Lord. Cause us to live in harmony and peace with one another and free our citizens from want, suffering, danger, and fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show kindness to the sick and those who are suffering and those who are in need. We pray especially, O oh Lord, that you ever continue to bless and be with Daryl Hanald, Holly Meyer, Bernice Greaves, Deb Trexel, Wayne Retzloff, Crystal Olnick, Merlin Meyer, Seth Schultz, in which we also pray a prayer of thanks for him improving. We pray for your continued blessing. Cindy Burbridge, Larry Craker, Ken Rosinski, Charlotte Wilson, and those we name in our hearts. Grant them your care, your blessing, your strength, and assure them of your peace now and forevermore in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, grant your comfort to those who mourn the death of loved ones. We pray for the family of Delcy Hagen. We pray for the family of Pastor John Sugatam. We pray for the family of Phyllis Miller and for the family of Eileen Crolius and all who mourn. May they find comfort in the reunion and resurrection that is ours and our loved ones through faith in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, O Lord, for your many blessings. And we thank you, O Lord, for the peace that you give us now and eternally, especially through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray, O Lord, that we might live lives of thankfulness and praise to you for your many blessings. And we give thanks that the class of 1974 was able to, from St. Peter's Lutheran School, to celebrate their anniversary this day. Help us all to give you all glory and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless those who commune this day at your holy supper, that we might ever receive your body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of faith, and that we may be empowered to live for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to be the bread of life. Together with all the faithful who have gone before us, we give you thanks and praise. Keep us steadfast in the faith so that when our last hour comes, we may rejoice with them at the marriage feast in his kingdom, which has no end. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night in which he's betrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood which was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
we pray. We pray together at the post-communion collect. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you'd strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is Thine the Amen, Thine the Praise. Once again, good evening, and we welcome to each of you, especially for your guests, we welcome you. We ask that everyone please sign the card in the pew. If you can hand that to us on the way out and put in the offering plates on the way out, greatly appreciate it. Just the week ahead, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, the steam and gas show is a big thing coming up this week, and uh, the sign-up sheet uh, that is one of the that is probably the biggest fundraiser for both Lamp and for the youth, uh, and the 16th and the 18th. If you'd like to know more about that, you can speak with Mark Meyer um, or uh, Paige. Uh, and they'd be glad to tell you about that, but your help is greatly uh, is appreciated and needed. We also have a bowling party coming up, uh, which will be uh, next Sunday at 1 p.m. over at Brewster's Lanes in, in Reedsburg, and that's for, um, you can be a amateur bowler like me, or you can be like Seth, who's bowled a, a, a perfect game there, Seth. So we've got all in, uh, um, uh, looking to have a good time uh, and uh, a fellowship and fun over there. You'll also see uh, a fall festival coming up uh, that uh, will be the uh, 
uh, Board of Congregational Services is putting on. We have Back to Church Weekend coming on. Uh, so a lot of wonderful things. And hard to believe, August 15th, the teachers are going to be back. Boy, oh boy, it's where the summer goes. So um, uh, we give thanks for the Lord's many blessings. Blessings. Um, Tomorrow after the services, Michelle and I will be leaving for uh, my mother's funeral on Monday. And I give thanks. I've got uh, uh, Pastor Butler here uh, and uh, others to help uh, while we're away. But we hope to be back Tuesday night or Wednesday when we come back. And uh, make sure you tell Pastor Butler to wear his uh, purple clerical. He appreciates that. Make sure you greet each other and have a very blessed uh, week ahead for him, for the Lord.